down the street somewhere. Would you hear that? Somewhere over there. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Grizzly. <laughs> Yes, that's right. It's another moving day. But as RVers, this is what we do a lot. I'm not quite sure what's going on with the Thousand Trails website, but there seems to be some glitches with the reservation system as of late. We've talked to several different parks, and they have told us that if they don't get it fixed soon, what with the snowbirds heading south, they risk losing a lot of business. We just want to be sure that we get our subscription as it was promised to us. I'm sure that they'll work it out soon. We'll just have to see. Hey, just call me Ant-Man. We're headed back towards Mata Vista. It's 5.3 miles away, I think. We're gonna get up on the freeway to hopefully get enough speed up to create a little heat for the tires so that they uh, don't completely get flat on one side. They can kind of revulcanize. And then we'll, uh, we'll pull into the park, meet our favorite guard, Chris, and get put into a site. Hopefully not a site with the ants. Hey, just call me Ant-Man. Yeah. I got the bites to prove it. Huh? And not from you. The weather's starting cool. to get a little bit cooler. It is only 90 degrees outside right now at 10.50 a.m. This week, Chris becomes Ant-Man. Pretty funny now, but not at the time. Have you ever had to deal with pests in your rig? Let us know in the comments below. I'll wait for you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, you see him, don't you? Seems right there. There he is. There he is. Oh, it's him. It's all right. It's okay. Yeah, I'm dying. <laughs> you know, three days before we were moving this last time, we kind of experienced an ant problem. You know, those sneaky little black ants. Some folks call them sugar ants and say, yeah, those things don't bite. I'm here to tell you, the ones here in Arizona, yeah, they bite. Those are the ones. Little guys. Now, we leave Grizz's food and water on the floor so that he can graze any time that he wants. And haven't, for the last three years, had any problems with any kind of critters. But a couple of days before our move, we woke up to find a two-inch wide column of those little buggers sneaking in under our door to get to his uh, food and water. What a rude way to wake up. Well, I grabbed an old bug spray and went after him. Shelly wasn't happy, but at the moment it was all I had and they were starting to scatter with the light. We got it cleaned up and it was easy to find the large column of them where they went up the step rails and into the RV. So I went outside and sprayed down the trail all the way back to the hive. Proud that it had appeared that I had dispatched them all, I went back in as victorious as a returning crusader. But you know how when you see something creepy crawly, you just kind of start uh, itching uh, everywhere? Yep, two days before moving. Yeah, the next day. I woke up and they were back. But Al, long story short, it was the same routine, but this time I found the Zevo spray that we had bought. So I went at them again. Shelly went outside and did the same spray the trail back to the hive routine. Victorious, right? Nah, 
Not so much. The night we were getting ready to move, we started seeing them around 9 p.m. Starting to creep in again under the door and headed for Grizz's food again. We squished the ones that we could and I thought maybe we'll try some of these uh, online remedies. We sprinkled some coffee grounds around the door sill inside the RV. It's supposed to conceal the pheromone trail, I guess. Then I mixed up a three to one, that's three parts sugar and one part borax. And Shelly took it outside to catch the high van trails. All night I had dreams about things crawling all over me. But in the morning it appeared that they had gone. The borax and sugar works by them taking the borax back to the hive, which is toxic to them. The sugar works as an attractant to get them to think that everything they've grabbed is food. And I guess borax is the most common ant powder that's sold on shelves today. I've always used Amdro. It's uh, granules that I think most professional lawn care people recommend and use. But it acts pretty much the same way. With Grizz around, you can see why Shelly was really reluctant about residues left behind by those sprays. Zevo, I think, worked by using essential oils to go directly after their nervous systems. It worked instantly. But after looking at the warnings on the bottle, it says don't use it around small animals and pets. So yeah, that's out. A little paranoid now, especially after being bitten about a half a dozen times. We will both check carefully for pesky critters at each campsite. And for now, if we find trails, we'll use the borax treatment and limit Grizz's exposure to the trails and hives. We extended our visit at our last park for a day or so, so I could make it to my osteopenia nurse practitioner's office for an appointment. To follow up on my progress, Shelly and Grizz opted to stay so that they could prep the rig for travel the next day. While I left for the appointment, before leaving, she reminded me that the appointment was at the Phoenix office. While going out the door, I think I said, yeah, yeah, Phoenix. We were scheduled to move today, but had forgotten about this particular appointment. So we extended for one day and tomorrow we'll make our move. Not a big deal. But when I got in the truck, I didn't think of what she had said and started putting in the Scottsdale address to the GPS, the address where I had first gone to meet this particular practitioner. This time I'm gonna try following the GPS to the location rather than going my favorite route and see how it works out. Not always so much just right, but it's worth a try. Then just started the 40 minute drive listening to my tunes. So yeah, the office on Osborne, got it. But what was my mind thinking? I think I was just thinking I need to go to where I had gone the first time to see uh, this osteopenia nurse practitioner, which was in Scottsdale off Bell Road in the 101. That's 22 miles apart. Yeah, I did it. The Tesla truck. We hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. If so, let us know by hitting the like button. Thank you for spending your Sundays with us. We're looking forward to seeing you next week. I tuned out my wife just trying to make sure that I didn't goof up and go to the wrong address <laughs> and ended up doing it anyways. What was I thinking? Or not thinking? Well, it looks like I screwed up. The nurse practitioner that I normally see was at the other office in downtown Phoenix and I came to the one in Scottsdale. The nurse practitioner was waiting for me at the Osborne office. Shelly even told me to go to the one in Phoenix. I just got it stuck in my head. Come to Scottsdale. A little closer, a little easier. It was really nice of them to reschedule for me. Well, they were nice enough to reschedule for, I think, November 11th. It'll get taken care of. Fight a little traffic, get back to uh, the RV, finish uh, getting things ready for the... Uh, well, it's a mattress in the road, that's why. For the move tomorrow. And that's it. So goes life.
any of you guys ever do anything like this before? Sure hope you guys come back next week and see just what kind of problems I can create for myself. In the meantime, please travel safe.